So where does Extreme Cloud IQ come into this story? Well, the Extreme Cloud IQ platform is, in this regard, mainly a management platform. In terms of data control and management plane, Extreme Cloud IQ implements the management plane of your wireless network. It will take care of centralized configuration, firmware management, uh, RF planning, monitoring, dashboards, analytics, and troubleshooting. So everything that happens in that network, all the dynamic nature of your network will be monitored through the platform. But in order to implement changes, in order to adapt to those changes, that's all done locally, in the, locally on the APs. So Extreme Cloud IQ is, in this regard, a management platform. The control function is implemented by cooperative controls, cooperative control protocols, and is distributed between the APs. And the cooperative control protocols work the, in exactly the same way when you're deploying access points in a centralized campus, if you're deploying a teleworker solution, if you're deploying a small remote branch, if you're deploying a mesh network, it works in the same way. Um, there's no, and there will never be any centralized control, and the access points will always figure out things on their own without relying on either Extreme Cloud IQ or any sort of controller. So what are some of the benefits for our customers? by implementing a distributed architecture or cooperative control protocols? Well, it's one architecture from one AP to thousands of access points, and it's going to be the same regardless of what kind of environment you're deploying for. So you don't have to take into account a lot of planning um, of your deployment uh, for the control part itself. So that works out of the box. We're probably one of the, or probably the only Wi-Fi vendor that allows for not only flexible software updates, so a lot of cloud platforms will force you to upgrade your firmware whenever your controller, either your virtual or physical, is, is, is upgraded. With uh, Extreme Cloud IQ, there's very little interdependency between the firmware and the cloud. Uh, nothing beyond the fact that you need a minimum version of the firmware on the AP to be able to talk to the cloud, and beyond that, you're, you decide what kind of firmware you want to run. And you decide which location runs which version of the firmware, which is ideal for large global enterprises with multiple IT teams, uh, where different features may be required in different locations, and in those environments, it might take a long time before you roll out a firmware update for the whole deployment, whereas with a distributed architecture, each IT team can decide on their own what they want to run and make those decisions and changes locally only, without depending on a single uh, software version, without depending on the centralized controller. The access points implement distributed forwarding. Um, we said that with the growing demand for bandwidth on Wi-Fi devices and with 802.11ac and 802.11ax protocols to support that growing demand, um, the controllers quickly become a bottleneck. So even controller-based solutions have started implementing distributed forwarding or the access point will drop the client packet onto the local switch instead of tunneling it to the central controller. And that takes the advantage of you know, the wired LAN, which is already there. And you can use the same VLANs as your, they are already used for other devices, same access control policies um, that you already use for wired devices. And there, more importantly, there's going to be no central bottleneck uh, that the controller would introduce when you're using a distributed forwarding. Um, it will be, the load will be distributed uh, throughout your network architecture. So let's take a look at Cooperative control protocols. Uh, the cooperative control protocols are exchanged between the APs. And the one of the protocols called Advanced Mobility Routing Protocol actually acts very similarly to an OSPF routing at layer two. The exchange of information between the APs is done in two places. One is over the wire, so over the uh, layer two broadcast domain over Ethernet. And the other one is in the beacon frames, so over wireless, we will also exchange that same information. 
obviously all of it is encrypted using something we call a Hive key. And the Hive key is going to be, by default, it's going to be unique for every single customer. It will be auto-generated when you create your Extreme Cloud IQ account and then push down to the access points. But then it's also configurable and you can have multiple what we call Hives, um, which would be a logical uh, control plane entity using the same Hive key to encrypt those messages and two hives using two different keys cannot exchange those messages because they don't they can't read them so there's no there's no leaking of information between two different hives and why is that important let's say you're deploying a shared offices type of environment uh, you are providing the wi-fi managed wi-fi network for that shared office space and multiple companies deploy or use your services in in that space you don't want the control plane of one company to leak to another company, so you'll be able to use different hives within that same Extreme Cloud IQ to make sure that the control plane stays isolated between maybe two different access points or groups of access points on the same floor or in the same physical space. The cooperative control architecture takes care of redundancy as well. Uh, because it's a layer two routing protocol, it will make sure that the packets or frames rather, flow in the correct direction. For example, if your uplink, if your wired uplink fails, or if somewhere upstream you can no longer reach your default gateway, the cooperative control protocol will initiate a wireless backhaul. It will enable mashing, and that auto mashing capability will then um, prioritize the wireless path over the wired one, and your packets or frames will still flow. Uh, until such time as the wired backhaul is reestablished. So, and that's all built into the protocols themselves. There's, other than enabling that feature, there's nothing much to configure. And there, because of that, there's no single point of failure. Uh, the architecture will be able to route around problems and dynamically mesh when that's appropriate and then tear down that mesh when your wired connection comes up again. So let's summarize the discussion about centralized versus distributed architectures. Um, simply, if you look at the, the resources available, when you're using a centralized architecture, obviously the resources are going to be limited. There's going to be a limited amount of CPU, memory, storage, and so on, implemented on that central point, virtual physical controller, cloud controller. Um, if you implement all those features at the edge, you have more CPU, you have more memory available for every client device that you're connecting. And that's simply because you're leveraging what's already there on the access points themselves. You're not aggregating everything at the central point. Simply by counting the amount of processing power, the amount of CPUs, the amount of memory that's available at the edge APs and comparing that to one, two, four, eight controller deployments, there's going to be more. There's, there's going to be more in the access points. There's always going to be more resources at the edge. And Simply in terms of basic computer science, distributed systems always scale better than centralized systems. Uh, it's simply the way these architectures work. Now, I'm not saying that a centralized deployment should never be done. There are scenarios when centralized is actually required, uh, like the financial example when you have to do a centralized data plane to your DMZ. But obviously, Extreme Cloud Wireless does support those scenarios as well. Um, when, you're do, when you have a customer and you want to do a rip and replace, and their network doesn't really cater for or support deploying a distributed architecture, sure, you can opt in and still deploy a centralized data plane. But keep in mind that the performance and scalability of a distributed system will always be superior to a centralized one. Uh, and the decision between centralized and distributed and how you implement that will obviously depend on the customer, it will depend on the scenario, um, and it comes down to the network architect.